Welcome to ITTV for Form 2 Science, where we are continuing our journey through the world of our senses. Today's lesson, the limitations of sound. Now, we already know that with sound, we use the sense organ, which is our ear. Our ear hears the sound, and then we interpret the impulses that are produced in the ear as different types of sound by our brain. All these sounds help us to understand the world around us and keep us safe from danger. Remember, we hear with our ears. Humans can hear sound between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. This is called our audible range. That means anything between 20,000 hertz, which is the high end, and 20 hertz, which is the low end, we are able to hear. Anything lower than 20 hertz, we cannot hear. And anything higher than 20,000 hertz, we cannot hear either. Now this is a limitation. It's a limitation because we've got extreme ends of what we can and cannot hear. We can hear between these two levels but not outside of these two levels. Now this can be good and bad. Our ear is not designed to hear sounds over 20,000 Hertz. If we did hear sounds that were over 20,000 Hertz, it could cause damage to our ears. Sounds lower than 20 Hz are not really going to damage our ears, but unfortunately because the frequency is too low, our ears are not able to pick these sounds up. Different animals have a different hearing range. Animals can hear a higher frequency sound. Most animals actually can hear higher than 20,000 Hz. Now, the reason for this is because their sense of hearing is much, much better than our sense of hearing. Animals need to hear tiny, tiny changes in their environment, especially praise. They want to be able to hear when a predator is approaching. We human beings, especially during our evolution over the last few hundred thousand years, have not needed our ears as much as we needed our eyes. Most of our brain power has been seconded or focused to our eyes. Therefore, our ears have become a bit lesser than they probably were a million years ago. But still, it is adequate for us to hear what we need to hear. It's a shame though that we can't hear over 20,000 Hertz because if we could, we could hear dolphins talking to each other or we could hear bats as they navigated through the air. Above 20,000 Hertz, sound is referred to as ultrasound and cannot be heard. Many animals are also capable of hearing ultrasound. Animals that actually use ultrasound are bats for navigation and dolphins also for navigation. Now this might be a bit of trivia to you, but a lot of animals actually use sounds below 20 Hz for talking to each other. An example are elephants. Elephants use low frequency sound for communication. What an elephant will do is, it will take its trunk and put its trunk to the ground and it will blow the low frequency sound into the ground that is carrying a message. An elephant that might be 10 kilometers further down will sense this ultrasound, sorry, I beg your pardon, low frequency sound as it travels through the earth and it will pick up the vibrations and it will interpret it as a sound or a message. High level sounds, ultrasounds and low frequency sounds are commonly used by animals for communication. We also have trouble hearing soft sounds. Sounds that are too soft, we cannot hear. If I was to talk, you would not be able to hear it. Now the reason is, it is too soft for our ears to detect. 
Now, conversely, on the other side of the scale are loud sounds. Now, obviously, it's easy to hear a loud sound, but please understand that loud sounds have a major, major danger for us, which is they can very easily, very, very easily, cause damage to your eardrum and therefore cause damage to your hearing. We can use devices to overcome limitations of hearing. Now, our main limitations of hearing are sounds that are too soft and sounds that are too loud. So we want to create devices that will allow us to make soft sounds louder and make loud sounds also even louder. So let's have a look at some of these devices that we've created. Stethoscope, used by doctors to hear a heart beating. Now, with the stethoscope, doctors use it to hear the heartbeat. If you put your ear against someone's chest, you could hear the heartbeat, but the heartbeat is actually quite soft, and you couldn't really tell if there was anything wrong with the heart. By doctors using a stethoscope, which amplifies the sound coming out from the heart, the doctors can detect if there is something wrong with the heartbeat. If the heartbeat is irregular, or if the heart is beating too softly, or even if the heart is beating too loudly. We also use the stethoscope for having a listen to the lungs to see if there's any fluid in the lungs in case there is some sort of bronchitis or some sort of flu that you are suffering from. So the stethoscope to amplify the sound of the heart or other sounds from inside our body. Hearing aid used by older people to hear better. Now here, please, I'm not trying to insult our older generation. It's just that the older you get, the more your hearing starts to deteriorate because your eardrum loses its elasticity. The hearing aid is a device that we put inside the ear. It amplifies the sound going into our ear. So, even though the eardrum is not so elastic anymore, it still vibrates enough that the sound produced is loud enough for our brain to make a correct interpretation of it. And please be clear, not only older people use hearing aids, even younger people use hearing aids. It depends on the circumstances and any defects that they may have with their hearing. Loud hailer, used to make sound louder so it can be heard over a longer distance. This is the device I was saying that makes loud louder. Now when we speak, example me speaking to an assembly, I would speak with this voice which is quite loud. But the students who were sitting at the back of the assembly hall would not really be able to hear my voice clearly. In order to make them hear my voice more clearly, I would use a loud hailer. The loud hailer will amplify my voice and make the sound louder. We could also use a microphone with a loudspeaker, which will be functioning in exactly the same way. So remember, all these devices that we use tend to try to make soft sounds louder by amplifying the sound wave or the sound signal. Sometimes the ears are damaged and we may have hearing defects. Now a hearing defect means something is wrong with your ear and because there is a damaged part to your ear the hearing mechanism does not work correctly. Most common hearing defect is deafness. Now, deafness means you can't hear or you can't hear very well. So please be quite clear, not everybody is deaf, cannot hear. Some people who are deaf have got very, very bad hearing to the point where they can only hear maybe 10 or 20 percent of what is entering their ears. So deafness has got its ranges. But for someone who is totally deaf, it means that they cannot hear at all. Now, most people who are deaf communicate using their hands and what we call sign language. Now, this 
sign language helps to overcome the problem of deafness because we are not using our ears anymore to make out words, we are using signs to make out words so that the person will be able to understand quite clearly what you are saying to them. But what are the causes of deafness? Well, unfortunately, sometimes we are born deaf. And if we are born deaf, it is usually a result of something going wrong during the growth period while you were in your mother. And this is a common thing. But there are other causes for deafness, meaning to say that someone can become deaf after they are born. Causes of deafness, injury to the middle ear or eardrum. So let's have a look at the middle ear first. The middle ear can be easily damaged by diseases such as diphtheria or scarlet fever. Now, if you're damaged by diphtheria and scarlet fever, the middle ear cannot send the signals along. It means the vibrations that come into your ear cannot be changed into nerve impulses. If the nerve impulses are not sent to the brain, the brain does not receive or even know that a sound is coming into your ear. So this is one cause of deafness. Now let's look at the eardrum. If the eardrum is damaged in some way, either it is slightly torn or it has broken off from its muscular attachment, it means that the eardrum is not going to be able to vibrate correctly. If the eardrum can't vibrate, it means that the vibrations cannot be passed on to the middle ear and then later on into the inner ear. If the vibrations are not passed on, well then once again, we cannot detect the sound. Other causes can be too much wax, infection, toxins. Too much wax. Well, our ear produces oily wax. The reason for the oily wax is it's supposed to catch and trap any dust entering our ear. If you get too much wax in your ear, it can actually impact against the eardrum and reduce the ability of the eardrum to vibrate. When you look at infections, we're talking about infections such as a virus infection that could affect your inner ear or even your middle ear. These infections will eventually cause you to have a bit of a problem with transmitting the vibrations into the cochlea. Toxins and poisons, these could come from a multitude of things. If you accidentally got some sort of tetanus poison or some sort of uh, poison from an animal bite, well, these toxins may actually affect your ear and how your ear works. So all of these, together with what we spoke about just now, which is diseases such as scarlet fever, diphtheria, or a physical damage to your eardrum, like it tearing, all of these can cause deafness. Ways to rectify hearing defects. So if we have hearing defects, which means we can't hear correctly, or we can't hear well, there are devices that we can use or methods that we can use which will help fix these problems. Let's have a look at some of them. A. Use a syringe to clear out your wax. If you go to the doctor and say to the doctor, I would like my ear syringed, your doctor will syringe your ear with some warm water and remove the wax from the inside. Try this. You will not believe how much clearer the sound suddenly becomes if you've just got a problem of having too much wax in your ear. Please don't clear the wax by yourself by sticking something in your ear and trying to dig it out. That is asking to tear or damage your eardrum. B. Ear surgery. Sometimes there is a damage to maybe the bones in the middle ear or to the nerve connections at the cochlea. These type of damages can be fixed by ear surgery. Now it's not common to have ear surgery, but as our technology is improving, ear surgery is becoming more and more sophisticated and it's becoming better at rectifying hearing defects. 
Finally, let's have a look at C, wearing a hearing aid. Now, this is the most common way to rectify hearing defects. Uh, most people who are slightly deaf or who have a problem with their hearing use hearing aids. The hearing aid amplifies the sound, so it makes the sound louder and it makes it much easier for us to hear the sound. Now that we've had a look at some of the hearing defects and the causes of these hearing defects, let's try a few questions on what we've learned so far. Question 1. Humans hear sound in what range? So remember the audible range I was telling you about earlier? We have a minimum value and a maximum value. Can you remember these values? Have you written them down? Let's check the answer. Between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. So our audible range is between 20 and 20,000 hertz. And just for your information, hertz is the unit for frequency of sound. Let's try another question. Name two causes of deafness. Name two causes of deafness. So think about what could cause you to become deaf. What are the parts of the ear that are susceptible to damage and that can cause deafness? Have you written them down? Let's have a look at the answer. Damage to the eardrum or middle ear. So if you damage your eardrum or middle ear, it is going to cause or potentially cause deafness. Let's try another question. How do we rectify hearing defects? So here the question is, how do we rectify the hearing defects? What are some tools or inventions that we can use that will help us to overcome or fix our hearing defects? Have you written down your answers? Let's compare our answers. By using a hearing aid, having surgery, or clearing out wax. So hearing defects can be fixed three ways or three common ways. Number one, to syringe out the wax if that's really the problem. Number two, to have surgery if that is the only way that we can fix the hearing defect. And number three, to use a hearing aid if your hearing is slightly impaired or not up to a hundred percent. Now that we've done some questions, let's continue with looking at the limitations of sound. Type of hearing we have, stereophonic hearing. This is to say that when we hear, we use both of our ears at the same time. Both of our ears detect a sound and send the nerve impulses to the brain. We can hear using both ears. It allows us to judge distance. Now, example would be something like this. If you had a friend on your left hand side, Let's say two friends on your left hand side and one friend was further away and one friend was closer. If they both spoke at the same time and using the same amount of energy, the friend who was further away would have a softer sound. The friend who was closer would produce a louder sound. Now this is what we mean by judging distance. Because one sound is louder and one sound is softer, we can clearly say that, oh, the man or the friend who is speaking softly is further away and the person who is speaking loudly is closer. You would have to know though that both of them were speaking at the same intensity. We can also detect differences between loud and soft noise and this is another ability of our ear. If a sound tends to come from one side, it tends to be louder in one ear and softer in the other ear. Our brain can interpret this and tell us not only whether it's louder, but from what direction the sound is coming. You may notice this in your classroom, that suddenly you will turn your head to the left or turn your head to the right, because your sound or your ears have detected the slightest sound of someone approaching from that side. So our ears are able to detect not only distances, but direction as well as loud noises and soft noises. Hearing 
is important for survival of animals because we get warned of danger. This is especially so for our preys. Our preys are constantly listening out for whether tigers are coming. When a deer is drinking its water, its ears will be flapping around left and right, trying to pick up any sound of a potential predator approaching it. By picking up the sound, by moving its ears all around, the prey is trying to avoid danger and it is trying to enhance its own survival. So, please remember what we've done in this lesson. We've talked about hearing defects, which are caused by the middle ear or damage to the eardrum. We've looked at some ways to rectify these problems, using hearing aids, using surgery. Also, we've had a look at how we hear, which is to say we use stereophonic hearing, using both our ears. By using stereophonic hearing, we are able to detect distances and directions. This helps us in terms of survival, and this is very important for animals such as rabbits or deer, which are prey. They allow them to detect an approaching predator much more efficiently and quickly. That's all the time we have for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I hope you enjoyed watching ITTV.